Thank God. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Bob, I'm grateful once again to have me back in your church as usual. And I just want to appreciate the congregation for your love and great reception. Thank God for the scientific work that is helping me with my voice here. I think he realizes that when I use the mic, sometimes I get the mic out of my, my mouth, and that is why he's using this one. And I think that will help me greatly. This morning, thank you, Mom, for being so kind. And thank you for the great church. I was looking at uh, Pastor Ron. Was it some weeks ago? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Yes. And you know, I like his message anytime he preaches. I wish I was to stay in America. Everywhere he goes, I will go there. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is difficult to have many of these big American preachers to cross the sea into the continent of Africa. Yet we appreciate your mission trips because it's actually a risk. When you look at the continent of Africa and you look at the US and how people fly over to those places. When I was coming, I came with a Southern Baptist, one young lady. He's actually from Virginia here, working in Senegal as a missionary, but not to use the word missionary. You need to pray for some of these guys. Staying in the middle of Africans, you don't know them and the food they eat there. And I just believe that God works in the lives of people according to their obedience. Amen. And I pray that the same God will continue to work in our lives. This morning, I just want us to, your Sunday school class, the speaker already preached the message. And I was saying, why is this man speaking what I'm coming to talk about? But he has already said it. That is how the Spirit of God moves. To be frank, as you were saying, our church is growing numerically and spiritually. And uh, this year I was not able to work on, you call it the thumb, and we call it the flash drive. I don't know which one is which. That is where I accumulate all the photos of the events we have. But when you get to our website, you can see all that we have done throughout the year. And that is why I came late to the United States this year. But we thank God for what he has been doing and is still doing and yet to do. And thank God for your prayers. I wrote him a note of appreciation for how you have been supportive since the Lord connected us together. And we just want to salute you in the Lord. Amen. This morning, I want us to share on the topic, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are living in a world, sometimes we forget that we are not on this earth on our own. But when I read this verse all the time, it brings me to this recognition that I'm only here for a while and I'm here for a purpose. And when somebody is an unbeliever, God saves you from. But when you become a believer, God saves you for. Amen. And he saves you for a purpose. And what is that purpose? And many of us have been going to church, but we don't know the, the reason why God saves us. And that is why sometimes things that belong to God, you still see them as yours. Which means you have been going to church, but you've not realized who you are. You've not realized your potentiality. Right. And I just want us to study this word this day before I check out of your, this nice facility. God bless you for it. We are reading 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. See what technology can do. He said, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. 
If that is true, say amen. amen. If that is the case, then all of us, we've lost it. And if we missed it. If the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, then it includes us, the human beings. And whatever each human being has, because you are living on the earth of God, that belongs to God, not yours. Now, let me, not confusing your theology, but let us challenge each other. Do you know that God has not created the world? When you read in the Bible, you've not seen God creating the world. But God has created the earth. The world is the human mindset. And that is why we have all the divisions of nations, continents, countries, regions, you call states. And when we come to state, you have what you call areas. These are all human mindsets. And you realize that even where you stay, you still make a demarcation where you, you write either by your fence and let or speak to your neighbor and tell him, make sure that your kid's ball does not come to my area. That is your mindset. Come on. That's your mindset. But to God's initial plan is that he has created the, the earth for men to live in. Nobody owns anywhere. But see what we have created, the continent. Australia belongs to us. The United States belongs to us. Africa belongs to us. The, this area belongs to us. That is not the creation of God. It was like my creation should live on the earth I have made for them. And you realize that because of our mindset, we've lost it all to the extent of what God has blessed us with. Which the great picture of it is Hananiah and Sapphira. They were not forced to sell their property. And that is why I keep on telling people, do not imitate, but be convinced. In whatever you want to do for God, be convinced that the Lord is speaking to me. And just don't look at people doing and you say you are going to do it. And you realize that as they were doing it, in time past, Hananias and the wife, can somebody say good wife? Good wife. Amen. So that everybody was selling all they have, but all of them were faithful to the work of the Lord. And they were giving without a balance left. But Hananiah and the wife must have discussed at home. We will give, but in half. Thank God for your teacher this morning, you don't serve God in halves. Serve God in full. Amen. And when a man serves God in full, you will never regret. And this is what Captain Sanders realized. KFC, hello. <laughs> oh, Colonel, good. You realize that in it, I mean, when he was age 89, he was born, he was being interviewed. And listen to the statement he made. He said, I don't want to be the wealthiest man in the grave. As a result, he helps individuals and church organizations. And look what, now, you see, your future is determined by your today's decision. And what you, what you do today determines the distance you can go with God. Now, when he said this and he did all he did, you realize that even though he's no more, the business still goes. To the extent that even in the UK some years ago when I was there, I saw KFC in the UK. It's only in Africa, and I don't know whether it's all Africa, but I know that we don't have it in Gambia. <laughs> you know, 
So that what you do, especially when it comes to God, and I repeat the same statement that I once said here. When a man is blessed, make sure that your blessing does not control you. And as a Christian, when you are blessed, you are blessed for a purpose. And never see your blessing to be an achievement. But see it as an entrustment. And when you see your blessing as an entrustment, you will do the right thing. And why am I saying this? You know, I mean, he's a preacher and he has been a preacher for all these years. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. The reason why the Roman Catholic Church will never be bankrupt. There was faithfulness and even to their wealth, with their wealth, there was faithfulness. To the extent that whether a young Catholic or all Catholics who is wealthy, about to die, he will write a will in the name of the church. And that is why I said, if the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, as we said this morning, then we have lost it all. Why do we write wills to the loved ones and not to God? If we say the earth is the Lord and the fullness, therefore even in my own bank account, belongs to God. The whole idea is mine, 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 ours, ours, our family, not God's. And when you see things to be your own, you care less about God's thing. You realize the war at the end of the war between the Israelites and their enemies in Ziglag. The Bible said those who went to war met David and said, the spoil that we collected is meant for us alone. Let's get it uh, in, the, uh, in the book of 2 Samuel, 30 verse 22 to 25. Thank God again for the development in the U.S. Look at what you have on the screen already. And listen to the way the Bible describes these people for their statements. The Bible describes them as, then all the wicked and worthless men, look at the way the Bible describes them. Then all the wicked and the worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, because they did not go with us. We will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered except for every man's wife and children that they may lead them away and depart. David said, that is not possible because the conquest and whatever we got from the war was given to us by God. And we cannot do such a wicked thing. Those who stay back as, as equal as those who went to war. And this is what I want you to note. I mean, there is no country that is engaged in war of peace on this planet than the United States. And you realize that not all of them put their hands on trigger, on the trigger of the gun. But you realize you have some bullet suppliers and you have some whose hands are on the trigger. Hello? Uh, you, you know war. You have soldiers among you more than in Africa. You understand what I'm saying? Now, and the Bible said because of this, David put it in writing. That those who are at war front are as equal as those who stay behind. Because if you don't have those who will supply you the gun, 
I mean the bullet. You will be shot of bullets and you will be killed. But you have some who are behind supplying you the bullets. And this brings us into mission work, which this pastor keep on. And uh, I mean, he was talking yesterday and said, Cuba, Cuba. I was looking at, I said, Cuba? Is that not where Castro is coming from? And this man could sneak from America here to go to Cuba. <laughs> and the way he was talking happily, Cuba, 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 I said, goodness. And brothers, to be frank with you, some of you may not preach till God calls you home. But the fact that you are standing behind people who go in front, you are doing the same war. Amen. And you are doing the same mission work. And never be, listen, not, don't, be, don't be defeated by the enemy who will make you feel that, oh, I mean, why don't you keep that money at home? And you are thinking of people going on mission. Listen, the movement of your soldiers in some of these countries you see gives you peace in this country up That's till right, today. Amen. That's right. Amen. He got the whole world. Is that true? Yes. Uh-huh. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his And if he gets the whole world in his hand, what do you think he cannot do for us? So that if he got the whole world, even including our families, our future is not determined by us. It's determined by God himself. And that is why I feel that when somebody comes to Christ, put your head in, put your hands in, put your legs in, so that you will not be serving him in half. If truly the earth is the Lord's and fullness of, then he owns all. And I'm challenging you this morning that it is good to stand and support somebody who is at the forefront but the greatest work you are doing is to pray for him. Money can take anybody to everywhere, but it takes the hand of God to sustain somebody there. Especially these people who move into the U.S. to Africa. Listen, I know you bring all the tablets. I know you also take some. The tablets and the, you get the injection and you get all. But listen, the powers of Africa in the dark are never sleeping. And that is why even some of us, when we, when we get missionaries and they come into Gambia, when they come, you first take them to the embassy so that they will know their location in case of eventuality. Listen, Africa is full of trouble. Apart from sickness, you have wars that can develop within a short time. But when you, listen, your, your, your message, I mean, your prayers, your prayers is more than every flying bullet. Because it's God who takes care of the life of everybody. One time I had a missionary, and all of a sudden he just got some that He almost died. I had to consult the doctor to just give him some tablets. And the, this May was the first time to see that you've gotten some medicine against diarrhea. I say, America, I think you are only next to God. And when they were going, they left, and they left someone and said, Pastor Mendy, any time you have trouble with your stomach, you just take one pill. It will settle your stomach. I didn't want to laugh, but it was worthy of laughing. <laughs> you understand? Last year, they took me to this place, I think in Knox, Nashville, and they, they took me to one hospital. And I was looking at this hospital, I said, can Gambia has a hospital? Can they build a hospital like this? You will bring down our economy for 10 years for that single hospital. And this is what makes me sad about your country sometimes when you look at the television and you look at the way Americans mount their country, say all kinds of things about their country. 
I said, I wish horses were, I mean, I wish horses were, I mean, wishes were horses. So that God carry these Americans and take them to the continent of Africa and bring this African from Africa into America and let them begin to see malaria, Ebola, mosquitoes, uh, all kinds of disease. And when they come back, even one month experience, they will seal their mouth yeah. once and for all and appreciate God for the country he has given to them, which they never realize. Because, listen, now, I ask the question, I don't know whether I ask it here. You look at your life here. I asked, I think, some two years ago. I said, how many Americans do have a, a three or two, three weeks of dry fasting? Now, this dry fasting, you are not to take water, you are not to take food for probably one week. Why are you having dry fasting? You are asking God, I need a car. And I ask in America, how many of you pray for, and how long do you pray for having a car? And you know what? They are looking at me, so much. no, if you need, you just go and sign a paper of agreement. Then you get a car. You don't need to pray about it. I said, which means you don't pray for a car. He said, no, there's no need to pray for a car. You just go and get some agreement and you sign papers. And that is all. You know what? This is the country God has built for you. If he was a man, he must have come down to talk one-on-one -on -one with people like George Washington. And I keep on telling people, I wish death was like you sleep maybe for two years and wake up to come and see the country you have labored, the family you have started, whether the family is still the same. But that's not the way God made it. If God had made it so for George Washington to get off from, I don't know where they, where they buried him, for him to just walk into the street of Washington and get into your White House, I don't know. But this is the nation that was built on the principle of God. Right. Which this man, some of you are condemning. What is his name? Donald Trump. I don't know your political affiliation. But I want you to be very careful. Because every king is brought at the appointed time for a purpose. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Now he may not, listen, no man is perfect. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because the way sometimes people talk about this man. And look at the things he's doing. Promises of many people which was not fulfilled is now fulfilled by him at his time. That's right. Amen. Amen. And when you look at this man, when you look at him, he's not a selfish person. He's not a selfish person. I mean, in Africa, we monitor his movement and even his donations. We monitor all of them. He may not be a preacher. He may not be a good Christian. But he realized that what he has is not his. And listen, the greatest thing a man can do is to ever think of Israel and give them their peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. By all their embassy delaying and moving it to the place they have been anticipating for all these years. Yes. Come on. So that even if you are mad with him, be very careful so that you don't become a victim of God's anger. Yes. Right. Come on. Amen. Do you realize that since he came, terrorist movement has slowed down? Yes. You realize it? I don't know whether you know that. It has reduced. Even in Africa. Some people will tell you, if you cause trouble here, that man from the U.S. will come after you. And they mean it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Amen. Now, look at the difference. Look at the difference. They don't think, the past one, they don't think about that one. The one he succeeded, they don't think of that one. But now they know that if you mess up, that man will be after you. So that all I'm talking about is the earth is the Lord. And every living being on the earth belongs to God. And what a human being has belongs to God. 
Therefore, whatever you have is not necessarily mine or yours. It's God's. And if it's God's and you are to do the will of God, do it wholeheartedly with the knowledge that this is God's. Look at this big preacher, Kenneth Copeland. Now, sometimes people talk about men of God and the money they have. One speaker said one time, he said, if the money is used for a purpose, your hand will never dry. Around the world, even the late Billy Graham has never gathered the largest crowd like Bonke in Nigeria. And it, is, it was through the help of Kenneth Copeland. Now you realize that if the water of a particular well will let many people drink, God will, an, God will not allow that well to be dry. Right. Because many will be thirsty. Yeah, right. And I challenge you this morning. That make yourself a well that will never dry. When you make yourself available and the use of God, God will not allow you to see drought. We have some people going through droughts in churches. And God knows why they are going through it. And this morning, I'm challenging you. When you look at this place, I mean, when I'm traveling in the U.S., I do observe church buildings, and when I have the opportunity to enter, I look at the congregation. When you go to a place and there is God, nobody needs to tell you. This morning he was asking me, is our worship noisy? I said, I wish you get to Africa. You know what is noise. <laughs> you don't know. I mean, you don't know noise here. Because even your this sound system, you've, you've lowered it down to fit your hearing. In Africa, they will be mad with you. Why is this slow? Like we want everything that will break our ears. Come on, come on, come on. This big system, uh, this big system like this, is what we use for crusade. And the louder it is, the more people come. You see the difference in the world. And the, the louder your music here, nobody wants to be there. See how the world is. And brothers, I just want to challenge you. I mean, I was appreciating, I mean, uh, I, I was just looking at uh, the young couple who came. He said, brothers, one speaker recently said, he said, brothers, the struggle people are having now to go to church, it is not real hardship. The real hardship is for me to live in this world without Jesus Christ. And why were they saying it? They said, now our people, they walk seven miles to go to church. Mm. And uh, they were saying, in America here, even to walk two miles, nobody will go to church. That's right. 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 And uh, what shocked me more is, like when I get now and I count uh, the cars that are outside. Now, every car gets about four people, not so. Mm. Yeah. If it's in Africa... Every car will bring six people. <laughs> now, you just imagine if we have about 30 cars outside, 40 cars, time is six. Yeah. And nobody wants to meet service because every African believes that every day you go to church, God must have gotten a word for you. Yeah, come on. And nobody wants to miss because nobody wants to be told about what God has said. Yeah. And let me tell you, brother, since he started preaching, since he started preaching, his message are never the same every Sunday. Even if he repeats a message from one verse, mm -hmm. if he preaches it the next Sunday, there must be addition yeah. mm -hmm. or subtraction mm -hmm. according to the way God has apportioned it. Yes. And that is why every Christian must make it a duty, an obligation, to make sure that you are always in the presence of God. Amen. Hello? Yes. Because, listen, brothers, we... We eat every day. Hello? Yeah. If there is anybody here who doesn't want to eat, you just tell me so that you stay for two days. 
so that you do our fasting, maybe four days, no food, no water. Uh -huh. You see the response? Now, we want to eat every day. Why don't we want to eat the word of eternal life? And uh, that is what is happening in church today. Some people have gotten some bilateral agreement with God. God, you will only see my face on Sunday. <laughs> and I don't know when God has agreed, yes, I understood you. I will be expecting you every Sunday. What about Wednesday meetings? Come on. Pastor Bob, what I know is, it's on Wednesday that we study the Bible. What I don't know much about the Christendom, I can ask because opportunity on. is given. On. But on Sunday like this, who answered the question and who asked the question? So that as we crave for food to survive physically, let us crave for spiritual food Amen. so that we will last in this race. Yes. I know we do pray for the grace to continue the race. But let me tell you, if you do not feed yourself, you will starve yourself to death. And it is my prayer that none of us will die premature. Amen. Amen. God is looking for a faithful man yeah. who will say, God, here am I. Send me. Yeah. God, here am I. If you are looking for any man, here I've opened up myself. Send me. Now he was talking about the countries. Here we are now in Sierra Leone, we are now in Senegal, and we are now in Guinea-Bissau. And all these places are affected by rebels. In one region of Casamas, uh, that is in Senegal, you, I mean, you are going, the rebels will stop you. Where are you going? And when you say in French, église, they know that you are going to church, and they will let you go. But they do kill people. But one thing I know, when God sends you and you go in obedience, he builds a hedge of protection Amen. around you. Amen. Come on. Because the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews that he has assigned ministry angels. Mm -hmm. And those in ministry angels, you are not to see them with your eye. All the evil arrows and bullets of the enemy will not get close to you because if God is for us, mm -hmm. who will be against us? Amen. And at least I believe that quotation, but what I keep on telling people, the way it is written, it looks like if God for us, nobody will stand against us. No. If God is for us, the enemy will rise up. The only thing I know, he will not succeed Amen. in his attempts. Amen. And that is why sometimes when you are tired, even when you are sleepy, will I wake up again? But God knows how to survive and God knows how to keep you. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we are coming from crusade, I mean, I remember one time, I thought, that I thought I was not waking up. After preaching, I've never been sick and I've never felt sick that day. After preaching, I vomited for an hour. And somewhere I asked you, what happened? Not knowing that the place we were preaching, because as we were preaching, all of a sudden it was just like a smell just passed. And everybody was asleep. But when I woke up the following day, I said, I'm going to preach again. They said, No, you will not preach. I said, I'm preaching. Hello. Sometimes it's good to be stubborn for God. Yeah, amen. Mm. Come on. Let the devil know that amen. his threat will not hold us to ransom. We are here for a purpose, and I know the one who sent us to go is with us, is by us, is in front of us, and he's behind us. Yeah, the enemy will not succeed to make his name ridicule. No. Yeah, come on. I don't want to end here, but telling you that you were saved from, but now that you are in the kingdom, you are saved for. Come on. Amen. And you, the for you are saved is for a purpose. And God is letting you know this morning that the earth is the Lord that you are standing on. Yeah. It's his. Amen. And the fullness which you are part of, Come on. thereof. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever asked yourself, 
I found myself in this church. What is the reason of my presence here? And God, what I like, I like uh, Apostle Paul. When he fell from the horse, he said, oh, what can I do for you? He said, no. You will not hear it from my mouth. But you hear it from another mouth called Ananias. God will not talk to you. Your obedience will bring you down to listen to a fellow man who will be an instrument of God. Come on. Now, since we met the Lord Jesus, have you ever asked yourself, what can I do for you, God? Come on. What do you have me here to do for you? And I told you, in construction, there's what we call a pillar and a scaffold. Have you ever asked yourself, am I a pillar to continue to hold this building? Or am I just a scaffold to temporarily serve and leave? Because you will be disconnected. I don't know whether you understand. Uh, you, are, you are familiar with the word scaffold? <laughs> yeah, it's an iron that you cannot rely on because when the building stands, it's going to be dislocated and moved to another place. The question is, what are you? Are you a pillar? Or you've never been a pillar? Ask yourself when you get back home. And let me tell you, brother, in every church, God has a lot of pillars. They have only not identified who they are. It is my prayer that some of you will begin to identify who you are in this church called Greenway. When you realize it, you are not sick, you understand? But you've never gotten peace. But when you realize who you are, God will now move that burden that has been disturbing you all over the years Come on. and bring you into that line. Yes. Yes. That, oh, Lord, yes. I never knew that this is why you were not giving me peace. Or you just decide to become a pure warmer. No? God is not looking for those people. Come on. And so long as you're a peace warmer, you begin to develop your tentacles and the wings to throw whoever you don't want. Mm. But God is looking for a pillar. Come on. Yeah. But I believe you have a lot of them here, Pastor Bob. Come on. And when they identify it, you yourself, you will share it with me. We were, we were raising some money for the building uh, in Gambia. And uh, one young man came and said, Pastor Mendy, the church has proven me wrong. He came from Nigeria. And the man said, non-Gambians who are here said, Gambians do not give. I said, okay. And he, when he was coming, he brought something like uh, 10,000 uh, dialysis, which is about, he, I don't know how you know our money, you can easily convert it. $10,000 is just like uh, almost $300. He brought $300 and uh, he was just looking around thinking that he brought big money. About six to seven people brought exact amount like he brought. Mm. Oh. At the end of our, uh, our offering, we got almost $10,000 equivalent. Wow. And the man said, I'm now going to tell people that we have been proven wrong. Come on. Because I know the same Jesus who speaks to hearts in other countries like America and other parts in Africa is the same God who is now establishing his throne in Gambia. Come on. Amen. It's a matter of realizing who you are. And realizing how good, has, how good God has been to you. Because the idea of struggling to give tells that you have not yet encountered God. Come on. If you've really encountered God and God needs your substance, yeah. there will be no wrestling. Come on. Come on. There will be no struggle. There you go. Amen. Now, do you know that there are some diseases that doctors cannot diagnose? Hello? Yeah, come on. Yeah. But there are diseases. Yeah. 
But do you think Dr. Jesus would not diagnose it? That's no disease that he cannot. That's right. That's right. And that is why I just want us to avail ourselves unto him this morning and say, God, here am I. Yeah. Yeah. Even my own flesh is yours. Even the shirt I wear is yours. Yeah. You know why? This shirt is called your own because you are alive. Immediately life is taken from you, it's no more your clothes. A millionaire is a millionaire because he's alive. When his life is taken from him, That's right. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know in Africa, now we have what we call human being and we have what we call a dead body. Now, when a man dies, he's no more he or she. No. It. It. Yeah. It. We are going to bring it. What is that? The dead person at the mortuary. We are going to bring it, not him. That's how Africa, that's the, the way the lo, our local language sounds. Mm -hmm. Immediately you are dead, you are no more he or she. You are it, just like a stick. Wow. Like a stone. Yeah. Just to let you know that you are actually he and she, handsome and beautiful because of life. Yeah. When life is taken, yeah. and you make it worse, because the way you criminate the body here? No, you don't do that in Africa. Yeah. Hello? You burn somebody alive? No, you cannot do that. But in, in America, they will tell you, it's cheaper, it's cheaper than to buy a coffin. In Africa, you see, it's like, you go and tell them, yes, uh, my dad is dead and uh, we are just going to take him to the hospital so that uh, he cremate? No. But it's just to tell you that is, there is no more life yeah. in that person. Yeah. He is just like some something. Yeah. And this morning I just want us to, this is our home, hello. When we say home, home, we don't have homes. Our homes are where we meet with our we call him Papa, that is Dad, Come on. in heaven. Amen. That's our home. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why the Bible tells you that, I mean, one day in his presence is more than a thousand years. Come on. Amen. Therefore, if you can afford to sit at home, probably you are sitting at home maybe to enjoy your television. Watching television, you are not going to church. At the same time, as you watch your television and the heart stops, Hmm? Jesus, Jesus. No, you sit and watch your television. Don't call the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus is only found in church. <laughs> and if you don't go to church, don't call his name, watch your television. Oh, you call television. <laughs> yeah, because to you, television was more important than Jehovah. And so long as television is more important than Jehovah, hold that television. And call television to come and heal you. Come on. <laughs> wow. yeah. And like here sometimes, now it's no more television. Let's go, you call it what, picnic? Is it picnic? By the beach? Yeah. On Sunday you have more people going to the beach than any ordinary day. Yeah, come on. Yeah. The earth is the Lord's. Yeah. And the fullness thereof, even the sea. And the river where you go to swim. Yeah. It is my prayer that God will open that veil so that we begin to see first who we are yeah. and begin to know who Jehovah is unto us. Yeah. And whoever we are is because of that Jehovah. Yeah. Whatever we have that we beat our chest to owe or to own, Belongs to him. Amen. And some, I think sometimes even our movement around the world should even teach us. Sometimes when you are coming for, from Africa, eight hours in the air. Mm. And I came with somebody from South Africa. He said from Australia to, 
to UK is about 20 hours. From New York to South Africa is 16 hours in the air. Now, forget about the ability of the pilots. You think the flight in the air is sustained by pilot and not God? And that is why when I'm traveling, I just said, God, let's go to U.S. again this year. That's how I, I, I don't pray. It's just like I'm about to enter the plane. I just say, God, let's go again. And when I'm coming back, I'm going back, he said, God, let's return home. Because I know that, hey, with pilots without Jesus or pilots without God, which flight? Even birds in the air, sometimes they have accidents and they fall. Let alone ordinary iron. You call it monster that flies. It's God. And he has been good. And you realize that his goodness be, goes beyond even those who believe in him. That he even extended to those who don't know him. That's right. Amen. Amen. What about you and I who are blessed yes. for this man to reveal his goodness unto us? How should we hold him? Yeah. Mm. I, in Africa, sometimes they, they said, if I were... Uh, if, if our continent was blessed like America, we would be seeking God every day. This is the expression of Africans. And I mean it. It's like the God who built America to that level. Why wouldn't they build? I mean, why wouldn't God do the same thing in Africa? Look at your friend and tell him, let's appreciate Jehovah. Appreciate Jehovah. He did well for this nation. Amen. And I was telling, not Uncle Bob, I told somebody that in Africa, oh yes, I have a friend in Newport, I call him Uncle Bob. He is 80 years now. And that's why when I call him Uncle Bob, he understands. <laughs> in Africa, when somebody has a, a visa for Australia, it means nothing. A visa to UK, Germany, or France, it means nothing. Immediately somebody hears that, like in Nigeria and other countries, immediately they hear that you got a U.S. visa, they make it a celebration. Why? Ask yourself. Because I know that there is also hardship and poor people in America here. But why is it that any time you have a visa for the U.S., everybody celebrates with you? And that's what I'm telling you. To appreciate this country God has built for you. Amen. Even though the earth, the entire world belongs to God and the fullness thereof, there is some specific about this country. And there's some. And, and I pray for this country that God will keep this country, regardless of who comes and who lives in leadership. Because I know, and I know. Even this man, you'll be surprised that even the death of Billy Graham was celebrated globally because he has affected lives, including in Africa. And one thing with that man, he cares less about the nation where you send him. Even if he will be killed, he will go. And I pray that God will raise up men like that once again Amen. in this nation. Amen. And it will take men who will just say that, I want nothing without Jesus Christ. And that's the type of Billy Graham. Yeah. To the extent that he was sending money even to Africa for people to attend meeting in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why when he died, even in Gambia, people, we organize a meeting and people say, no, this man, we must let them know that we really appreciate his contribution when he was alive. Yeah. And brothers, that's why I say that uh, what a man does determines the level you will go. Because even when you die, it is very difficult for people to forget your name because of the lives you have affected. Yeah. How many lives will be affected by you? Mm. Begin to realize who you are. The purpose of you being a Christian and the purpose of finding yourself in this church. God brought you here for a purpose. Amen. 
I pray that the Lord will open your eye to know the purpose why you are here. Amen. More hands, less work. Come on. Amen. Few hands, more work. Yes. And that's why you should, ooh, help me. Yeah. But when you have many hands, let's go home. If you don't realize it on Saturday, come and see it here. Hello. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Come on. So that only Uncle Bob will be here and the Gary. <laughs> and that's when you will know that, oh, what he said during the message, we are seeing it. Yeah. May it not happen because we have men Amen. in this place. Come on. Amen. 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 Is there anybody whom I've spoken to? Amongst you here, you've not yet identified who you are. Whether you are a pillar in this house or you are just a scaffold, temporarily serve to live, or you are just to warm these chairs. Let me not say pews because no pews here, but chairs. And let me tell you, when you find yourself in the house of God, is for a reason. He planted you here for a reason. Yes, that's right. And because you are his fullness, the earth is the Lord. The fullness there includes you. Amen. And he brought you here for a purpose. And he's, all he's now wishing is, I wish this one will realize who he is. Whether he is the engine of the car or the wheel. If you are the engine, then the car will move. No matter how good the wheels are, the engine yeah. is more important. Right. As you leave this place, I'm challenging you. May the Lord keep you. And may he, fa I mean, may he has make his face shine upon you yeah. as he directs you yeah. in this race. And my prayer is that he will give you the grace to continue this race. Because that is the purpose why he called you. Yes. 